Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I want to do an update today on Marie's Master Watercolors. You may have remembered that, oh, a couple months ago I did a review on the um, the three colors that I purchased from the Marie's Master line when it was on sale at Jerry's Artorama, and I painted this painting with it, and you can find that on my YouTube channel if you are interested. It was a lot of fun, and I really loved those three colors that I bought. And I thought, you know, I'd really love to try some more colors in the range and I thought that when they go on sale again I would pick up a few tubes. Well my friend Ophelia who works for Jerry's Autorama from time to time, I don't know if she works there or just does some freelance stuff from them, but anyways she had picked up a bunch of the Masters watercolors open stock and she asked me if I would like some. So uh, she sent me some of her tubes which is so nice and we had a joke because they took a trip around the country <laughs> She sent them to me. She's on the East Coast too, and it made a it made a detour through Texas. It was a riot, and when it when it came to me, that poor package had been torn up and and rebagged and had a, had a sorry note from the UPS. It was it was a riot, but they still were just gems and they performed well. Uh, so I just wanted to go over with the other colors that are in the line. If you want um, the more in depth review uh, featuring these three colors. You can check that out. I will try to remember to put a link in the video description. If not, it's right on my channel. Just search Marie's Master Watercolor Review. And in fact, there aren't too many reviews of this product, so it'll come up even if you just type it into the general Google search box um, or the general YouTube search box. But um, let's take a look and um, see how they are. And I have to say, I, I am impressed with the line as a whole, although I would suggest picking and choosing your colors. It was kind of funny when I was getting ready to do this video this morning, I went online, I went to um, to Jerry's Autorama and it looked like the price had gone way up on these, but then, so I clicked on one of the paints and I added it to my cart and it was ringing up as $2. Um, but now I just checked before I pressed record and they're on sale for $3.36 a tube. Um, I think the regular price is around five dollars a tube. Regular price was like $3.99 when I bought these and these were on sale for $2.50 so the prices fluctuate a lot. So just to kind of give you an idea, I'm not affiliated with Jerry's Artorama. I have done uh, work with them in the past but currently I have no affiliation with them. Um, they do tend to have the better price. You can buy sets on Amazon but you really got to check both places because, um, I, and I will link to both and then you can, you know, you can check depending on the day, one might be a better deal. I think on Amazon you have to buy them in like a, like a set of six reds or six blues or something like that. So it's not exactly, it's not the way I would recommend you picking up these paints because there are certain colors that are stronger than others. And I think if you pick the right colors, you, you'll come out with a palette that you absolutely love. I think if you bought them all, you would be disappointed in about half of them. So I would just I would just say uh, choose wisely and uh, choose colors that you would tend to use. The three colors that I started off with I really liked, but in comparison I have to say there's other reds that I would have picked other than this. So I started off with crimson red because and I thought the crimson would be a little bit more like alizarin crimson there, but it's definitely got a little bit of an orange undertone. That's PR149. That's the red that I originally started with here. Um, then I used lemon yellow PY3. And then I chose ultramarine blue. I chose these three colors because I'm very familiar with, I use ultramarine blue in every painting and I use PY3 a lot and I chose the crimson because I was I was curious. I didn't think I had that pigment in any of my other um, paints so I wanted to give it a try. And that was a really nice triad and I decided to keep that triad right here in this little tin uh, for quick sketching. I could toss that in my pocket really easily. The little palettes from Sean's 3D printing on Etsy if you're uh, looking for something like that. Um, but I did end up making a palette with these other colors that Ophelia sent me. So this is uh, this is the, the range of colors. So I put little hearts on the paints that I would recommend if you are considering picking up some of these tubes. Let's just go through them a little bit. I obviously didn't swatch these on camera. Um, so we'll just go through and talk about the colors a little bit. If you wanna grab a notepad and jot down like notes, maybe jot down some colors you might be interested in trying, that would be great. Um, because I'm just going to be uploading this and uh, everybody's interested in different things. So just, you know, just take notes if you think you might want to purchase some of these colors. So up here, I just wet a big bar because I had a little leftover space in my swatch. This is Fabriano um, Studio watercolor paper, which is 25% cotton. It's what I do a lot of my swatches on. And I just dripped in some of the bright colors. You can see they blended together really well. I didn't get blossoms. Um, I didn't get mud. These, uh, these colors behave quite nicely. 
the um, the paints these remind me the most of in both the color intensity pa and palette and also usability would actually be the Winsor & Newton Professional watercolors. So if you like Winsor & Newton Professional watercolors, maybe you're looking to save a little money on some colors. Um, these colors that I put the hearts on, those would definitely be ones you might consider trying to replace some of the, like say you bought the pan set and you're, um, you're starting to use up some of the colors, I definitely would recommend some of these colors as less expensive replacements. They're much higher quality than Cotman watercolors. I thought when I first bought these original three that they may be made by Phoenix. I thought they might be the same as the Phoenix Artist watercolors because they looked very similar and some of the numbers matched up. I mean like the Ultramarine had the same number as the Ultramarine and Phoenix. But swatch side by side the Marie's Masters were much more pigmented. Oh and I want to make sure to to really stress the fact that these are not the Marie's watercolors that you buy for ten dollars for 24 in a set. Those Marie's watercolors are quite, in my opinion, quite awful and I do not recommend them and they smell and they shrink a lot and they crack in the pans and they are just a really low quality product in my opinion. Um, so I mean if you have them and you love them, keep using them. I don't want to, you know, yuck on your yum, but I never recommend the Marie's uh, the traditional, the regular old Marie's paints that come in the sets of 24, the really cheap ones, because they just they, they just don't perform well. These are not the same as those. So I just want to be really clear because I know someone will be in the comments saying, I think Marie's paints are garbage. There's different grades and I do not think that, that whatever factory is making these are the same that are making the old Marie's paints. And I haven't used the Marie's China colors. Um, I actually started off with Marie's paints and I think I actually might have had the Chinese colors to begin with and those were great back in 1980 when I started watercoloring. But the um, the more modern multi-packs have not been great. So just wanted to put that out there. These have no odor to them. They're really delightful. They dry down really well. No cracking. You can see right here. I mean, they're 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 wonderful. They're not going to fall out of the pans. They're just great. And my apologies for background noises. Um, all the kids are home. They got friends here. Maisie's band is practicing. It's you know. <laughs> today my son and a friend over they were um they were building a tv cabinet in my husband's shop <laughs> it's been like you know and then the musical instruments come out it's been just like uh so noisy and crazy but i love it um they'll be back to school in two weeks so you know hey i'll, I'll take the noise when i can get it right um okay so let's go through these colors then we're going to do a comparison with the windsor newton professional range and I'll probably wrap it up. So uh, if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll help you out however I can. Um, so I'm just gonna go through these colors. I swatched them kind of in rainbow order. I saved the packaging from some markers that I got and that's where I put my colors in. Isn't that great? Um, if you watch my Sanjoki marker review, you would have seen me get very excited about the little plastic packaging thing that came in the markers and I saved them for watercolor palettes. Fantastic reuse there. Um, okay, so our first color here, Brilliant Purple. That's your, also known as Dioxazine Violet. And um, that is very similar to Winsor Newton's Dioxazine Violet. Very strong. That's a strong pigment anyway, so you usually don't find a weak version of that color, but that's a very beautiful one. Then we've got Purple Pale, which is very similar to um, Winsor Newton's Mauve. Um, I, that, that color is, I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very similar though to purple red, which would be very similar to permanent magenta from Winsor Newton. They're a new set of 24 uh, half pans. I know a lot of us take advantage of that sale they had on Amazon when they had the 24 half pans for like 45 bucks. Um, they have replaced a lot of the colors from the set that I have that I got a few years ago, but this is in their new set and I think that would be a good um, refill color if you buy that set and you want to have some colors to refill. Then we've got Permanent Rose. Now this says it's a mix of PV19 and PR122. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll compare these with the um, Winsor & Newton swatches I have. I have the older set that doesn't have the magenta in it and it's got real cadmiums instead of hues. So you know, you have to bear with me a bit. But um, I actually have it swatched out two ways. So here is the Dioxazine Violet Winsor Newton, or actually they call it Winsor Violet, but it's the same pigment. There's my big swatch and there's my smaller uh, in my, um, the swatch that goes like in my tin. Uh, then we'll get back to that when we get to, let's see, where are we at? I'm so rude, I'm chewing gum, I'm sorry about that. Um, so purple, red, that's similar to the permanent magenta they are now have in their sets. Now we get to permanent rose. That's very similar to the permanent rose from Windsor and Newton there. And then I've got it swatched there. So you can see the hue is just about uh, identical. This is PV19, this is PV19 plus PR122. 
Then we have um, Alizarin Crimson, and it is a permanent Alizarin Crimson, PR206. And we have that right here, PR206 from Windsor & Newton, and also, because different papers, you know, you swatch it out, it's always a little bit different. This Windsor & Newton seems to be a smidgen warmer than the Masters, but uh, it's a good color. Then we have uh, Crimson, PR149, that one's a little different from what I have. Then we have Transparent Red, PR254, and we have Cad Red Deep Hue, T uh, PR254. So they're both two PR254. I've got that right here. Um, they call that Windsor Red. Very similar, very similar to both, honestly. You don't need both of those colors. I like both of them, but I think I prefer the Transparent Red. It is a little bit warmer, uh, but it's also more smooth. And if you, But if you wanted a little bit more granulation, you can go with the Cad Red Deep Hue, and I think they might have added something to that Cad Red Deep Hue to give it the granulation that Cad Red can have sometimes. Um, so actually, my set did not have a Cad Red. So uh, actually, did my set not have any cadmiums? Yeah, I guess the set that I had didn't have any cadmiums either. Um, the next color we have is Cad Red Hue, which is a little bit more orangey, which I do not have a comparable color in my set of Windsor Newton. Um, and I think that's alright, but with the warmth of the transparent red, I guess I would probably choose the transparent red over the cad red hue. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it just wasn't one of my favorites, but it's not a bad color. Then we have vermilion red, um, P073. Actually, I really like that. I don't know why I didn't put a heart on that one. I'm going to put a heart on it right now. It's really nice. Yeah. Why didn't I put a heart on that? Um, <laughs> and then we have cad orange hue, which is very similar to Windsor orange right there and I'll show you the other swatch just so that we have a uh, comparison for you know just different swatching abilities. Now we have um, Cad Yellow Hue and Gamboge Hue. They're both warm yellows. I think I prefer the Gamboge Hue, hue myself but that's personal preference. Um, I don't have either of those colors here. The, the yellows that I have in my Windsor Newton set are all cooler um, and the Aurelian is fairly similar to the lemon yellow that's in there but those are different pigments. Both of them could have a little bit of a light fast issue, but um, I honestly have never had a problem with PY3, which is what this is. Um, and I don't think I've used Aurelian enough to to notice whether there's any browning over time. But anyway, I really like Gamboge and I really like Lemon Yellow. There's nothing wrong with, wrong with a Cad Yellow Hue, but the Gamboge is a little bit warmer and a little bit cleaner. So that's what I went with. Even though it's three colors, to me it's still more transparent and more clean looking than the Cad Yellow Hue. They're both good. Um, Lemon Yellow definitely would recommend that. That's stronger than the um, than the Aurelian or the Windsor Yellow, in my opinion. Well, maybe it's about the same strength as Windsor Yellow, but it's a little bit cooler. Sap Green. I don't like the Sap Green in the Marie's Master Watercolor. Um, you can mix, if you mix um, the Viridian, the uh, a touch of vermilion and gamboge, you get this gorgeous green right here. And that I believe is much prettier. In my to my eye, it's much prettier than the sap green that they have. So um, that's what I would do. I wouldn't I, I don't really like that green. For me it's a little too grainy. It's a little too uh, streaky and weak. I don't really care for that. Uh, there's also a phthalo green, PG36. Um, and then the other phthalo green, which is PG7, they call it Viridian. I like the Viridian, it's stronger, it's more transparent, and it mixes better in my opinion. But um, if you prefer PG36, if you prefer that more yellow tone, it's not a bad one. Um, I just prefer the Viridian, but you can do whatever you want. Hooker's Green Dark, I didn't like it. Um, to me, again, it's, it's kind of gritty, um, it's kind of weak, it's kind of a dull color. I don't care for that. I think you could mix a hue. Uh, very well and you could even brighten it up a little bit and have it a little bit less desaturated so I, I'm not a fan of that one wouldn't recommend it peacock blue is pretty but you can mix it with your PG7 and your PB15 which are both colors that I hearted because I like them and let's just do a little comparison here um, oh so that's true Viridian right there it's a little bit weaker it is a little grainy um, that's nature of that color a little hard to rewet it's a uh, it's nice if you're looking for a granulating green um, that's the hue made from a phthalo green pigment. It's much stronger, and I don't believe they put this. No, they don't have this anymore. This one is no longer in the Windsor Newton set of 24. They replaced it with a PG7 like that. So that would definitely be a good um, top off color if you're looking for something to replace it. I will say that the um, the sap green in Windsor Newton is nicer than the sap green in the Marie's Masters, and the olive green. Um, 
Uh, actually, the, the Marie's Master sap green is kind of some between the olive and the sap green ones are Newton, but I don't think, I think both ones are Newton's greens are prettier than, than, uh, than that green, in my opinion. Um, obviously, you can, uh, you can like what you like. Um, and then we've got Peacock Blue. Sometimes, um, sometimes brands will use PB16 for this color, but I would say PB15 plus PG7 is probably a more light fast version. It's pretty, um, but since it's easy to mix, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Sky Blue PB15, this obviously does have an undisclosed white in it. I believe it's meant to mimic Cerulean Blue. This is what Cerulean Blue looks like right there, and here, that's a little bit stronger of a, of a swatch. Cerulean's a little less saturated, um, and granulates a little bit, but that is no longer in, actually, you know what is still in the Windsor Newton set? My apologies. So I believe that's what Sky Blue is supposed to replicate. Prussian blue, that's a really nice clean Prussian blue. I gave it a heart because I think you could use that. If you don't like the, the um, intensity of phthalo blue, if that's a little too modern and a little too bright for you, that Prussian blue is really lovely. Very similar to Windsor Newton's Prussian blue, and I'll show you this other swatch of it too, just so you have both. I think this one might be a little bit brighter. This almost looks like it's enhanced with phthalo blue, which it could be because I found out over the last couple of years that companies can boost their colors a little bit and not necessarily disclose it. Daniel Smith. Anyway, the next color we have is Thalo Blue, and uh, do I have, yep, that's Thalo Blue and Windsor Newton right there. Some, it's also called Windsor Blue. Sometimes it's called Intense Blue, like in the Cotman range you call it Intense Blue. Oh, this is a good point. If you had Cotman watercolors and you want to upgrade and pay the same price as you would for Cotman watercolors, the Marie's Masters would be a good option. So if you're kind of taking the next step in your watercolor journey and you're going from Cotman and you want to take a next step up, but maybe you don't have a huge budget, this is this is a really good option for you, in my opinion. Um, just get make sure you're getting the Marie's Masters. You want the Masters paint. I can't stress this enough, because if you get the regular Marie's watercolors, you are going to be, you know, singing a tale of woe, because it, those are not good. It's got to get the Masters. Marie's Masters. Um, PB29. So that's cobalt blue hue. This is a mixture of PB15, which is phthalo blue, PB29, ultramarine blue, and PW6, which is a white. Uh, I would skip that because you can mix it. And uh, then ultramarine blue is a very aggressively granulating ultramarine blue from Marie's Masters. I love it. If you don't like granulation in your watercolor, I would avoid this and get something, get a different brand, maybe get... Um, Oh, what was I just reviewing that had that had uh, beautiful colors but little granulation? Oh, Utrecht, for instance. Utrecht had very little granulation in their ultramarine blue and, and in their other colors too, so that would be a better choice if that's what you like. But I like the granulation, so I really like this. There's a Windsor & Newton version. There's the other Windsor & Newton version. You can see very similar. Not, I'm not surprised it's the same pigment, So, um, but quality-wise, I found them to be very, very comparable. Then we have Indigo. The Indigo from Marie's Masters is less blue than the Indigo from Windsor Newton. I think the Windsor Newton's a little bit prettier. The Payne's Gray looks very similar. I don't think they use the same pigments though. Uh, yeah, they don't use the same pigments at all, but the, the final outcome does look quite similar. Uh, then you've got a uh, Ivory Black, which is, looks pretty much the same either way. And then for the earth tones, what really made me feel like these reminded me of Windsor Newton was this burnt sienna, which is such a red transparent burnt sienna. This is the uh, Windsor Newton version right here and right there. So you can just see that's that just look, reminds me of Windsor Newton so much because the very transparent, very red. They use PR 101 as the base color and it's it's a very clean PR 101. Now these two colors, Indian Red and English Red, are both made with PR 101, but they're opaque colors. So um, this one's more of a maroon. This one's more of a, um, a rich brown red. You know, if you like those colors, I think those are nice, nice versions of those colors, but since they're not favorites of mine, I didn't heart them. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. They just weren't my favorite. Looking at the other earth tones, there's a beautiful burnt umber, which is actually a mix of PBR7 and PY42, which is a little strange because I don't see any yellow in that, but that's such a gorgeous color, beautiful granulation, and um, I think it's really pretty. Now this, I think, uh, this burnt it's called Umber Deep, but it says PBK7. I think that's a typo, but maybe it's not. Maybe they just treated that black pigment differently. They pull up the brown tones. I'm not sure, but um, that's a single pigment color, but to me, it doesn't have the life and richness as the Burnt Umber that's a mix. 
which is what I would recommend. This, the Van Dyke Brown, is a mixture of PBR7 and PR101, so it's a it's a reddish brown with a brown brown, and it's smoother, less granulating. Van Dyke Brown is a nice brown. I like that too, but I I, I think Burnt Umber for me in this range, that would be the, the earth tone for me. I do like the Burnt Sienna though. It's, you know, I got to be in it. If I had that, I would like to have that too, but I wouldn't want to have that and not have that. So that would be my pick. Now they have two beautiful earthy yellows. They have both raw sienna and yellow ochre. The raw sienna reminds me so much of Windsor Newton's raw sienna. And part of that, actually, it's the same pigments, PY42 and PR101. So they're the same, using the same pigments as Windsor Newton's raw sienna. And it's just a slightly granulating, beautifully transparent color. Um, and I really like that. But I also like the yellow ochre, which is a little bit more opaque, but really super pigmented and would last you a lot longer because it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't use it up as quickly. And that would be that one right there. Although Windsor Newton uses PY43, which is, I believe, a natural yellow ochre and PY42 over in uh, Murray's, which is a synthetic yellow ochre. So, uh, so yeah. They use a synthetic, uh, Windsor News uses, uses a synthetic in the Raw Sienna. So maybe I just like the synthetic because it's a little bit cleaner. But uh, all in all, I think they're gorgeous colors and I don't think you would be disappointed in them. If you're stepping up from Cotman, I think you'd love these because these are so much like the Windsor Newton Professional range. Just, um, if I had to do a blind paint test, I would say they're very, I, that's what I would guess. If, I, if somebody gave me these colors with the hearts and said, what brand, brand is this? I'd probably say Windsor Newton. Um, so let's do some side-by-side -side swatching just to, for, you know what, I'm going to show you how to make that, I want to show you how to make that, uh, that green, because I think it's, a, you should, and you can do this with whatever brand of paints you have, it doesn't have to be this brand, but, um, on, I made a swatch with a layout of my paints so I would know what's what. Um, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to use one of my brushes here, I'm going to start off with my Gamboge. You always use a lot of the yellow. So to start off with Gamboge, I'm gonna take a little touch of Viridian, not a lot. Okay, then I'm gonna, I mean, um, Vermilion. Is that Vermilion PO, PO73? Now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm gonna take the, uh, the Viridian, Viridian Hue, because it's actually a phthalo green, but they call it Viridian. We're gonna mix that together. Isn't that just gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? So. Now that's a little too bright for me. It's a pretty color. It's just a little too bright. So what I'm going to do is add a touch more of the of the uh, vermilion. I'm going to add some more of the gamboge. And look at that. The red in the vermilion, that orange color, that um, cuts down on the saturation. And isn't that just gorgeous? Say you wanted it a little bit earthier, you could take a little bit of any of these, um, any of these browns here. These, they're actually red pigments. I'm going to take a little bit of the, let's do burnt sienna because it's more transparent, so I'm less likely to get mud. I'll maybe use a little bit more of that. Like get more of an olive. This little palette's from Sean three Sean's three D printing as well, so you know you can vary it quite a bit. Have some fun mixing your greens. I really recommend people mix their greens because you'll get a much nicer, nicer range. And see, you could actually um, get something closer to the Hooker's Green Dark without without um, without buying that color for one. Let's see. That oh, will go for that color. A little more viridian, maybe even a little bit of blue in there. You know, you can mix a very similar version, but not have it so dull. I'll add a little bit of ultramarine in there. Get something like the hooker's green. There we go. Get something like the hooker's green dark. but a little bit livelier. So yeah, have fun mixing your greens. It's a lot of fun. I also mixed a uh, just the gray using the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. Got a beautiful granulating gray there. That's a 
not too um, not too difficult to do because orange has a uh, blue and orange are opposites and orange is brown is really just a desaturated orange so something else I did I wanted to try I haven't done it yet actually something I want to do is compare Winsor Newton to some of the colors that we have here so this is my Winsor Newton tin and we can just go through and compare a few so let's start off with that purple color clean my brush we'll do the Marie's Masters first actually I'm going to keep the Marie's Masters on this side and the Winsor Newton on this side <laughs> otherwise I'll get very confused they feel so similar and then we'll do let's see um, I can look at my my swatch here. We'll do the yeah, I have it backwards. Um, we'll do the Prussian blue. Yeah, that's Prussian blue. And then I'll do the Prussian blue from this one, which is let's see, four over. Yeah, the, the Prussian Blue and Marie's Masters is a little bit more, it almost seems like Thalo Blue, kind of. Let's do one of the PR254 Reds. Ooh, that's pretty. That's Winsor & Newton. And let's do, that's kind of like the Cad Red Hue, Cad Red Deep Hue. Your same pigment. Oh yeah, Windsor Newton seems much stronger than this one, but maybe I just didn't activate it enough. I say Windsor Newton's stronger. Let's do also the transparent red, which is that same pigment. Um, which is right here. Oh, this one, well, this one texture-wise is closer to the Winsor Newton, but that one color-wise, Winsor Newton's a little bit better. I've got to be honest there. Let's see, what's another color that's very similar? Oh, let's do Ultramarine Blue. Um, so, oh, this is the Ultramarine, and I refilled that from Winsor Newton too. And so we'll do Ultramarine Winsor Newton. And these obviously were all filled from tubes. Oh, and avoid the Marie's pan watercolors. Those are awful as well. You've got to get the Marie's Masters. And that is the, um, that's the Marie's. Um, the Marie's pans, those are like, I don't know if Marie's just licenses their name out because they're the same as the Jerry Q art pans that I got a few years ago. I bought it for the palette basically, so I wasn't too upset. Um, but yeah, it's the same as the, uh, as as the Jerry Q paint. So it's Marie's Masters Tube Watercolors. I will link to it. It's specific. So this is a Ross Sienna, Windsor Newton. And we'll do that in the Marie's Masters. Very, very similar. Do a couple more colors here. Let's do the Burnt Sienna. Uh, let's see, right here, and I have refilled this one from Tube recently. I get a little bit more. That feels a little, a little weak, but I always find Windsor Newton's Earth tones to, to be a little bit weaker, so. Actually, it's more different than I thought. Let's see, what are they, oh yeah, they have a yellow pigment in the Marie's Masters and Windsor Newton doesn't. So that, that one definitely does look a little bit yellower. Um, let's see, what's another one? Oh, let's do the Thalo Blues, because those are very similar. So we've got Windsor Newton's over here. Give it a little bit more. And then let's see. See, I think the third one in this thing, a little blue over here. Oh, wow, that's actually stronger than Winsor Newton's. Okay, what other colors do we have that were really comparable? Um, oh, let's do the Permanent Rose. And I have refilled that from Tube recently. Winsor Newton's a, um, 
that their pan formulation is different. Ooh, that's so vibrant. Um, is different than their tube for formulation, but I really don't notice a, that big of a difference when I go and refill, because I always refill their pans with my tubes anyway. So I haven't really noticed a big difference. And I think that the Permanent Rose is going to be stronger for Windsor Newton than for Marie's. Oh, you know, not, not that much though. Marie's is a mix. It's a mix of PV19, which is what Windsor Newton uses, and it's got P, uh, what's it got? PR122. Which I think is what they use in opera. Which isn't a color used very often, so I could be wrong. Let's see, is there any others that we want to compare? We could compare, um, well, there are two different pigments, but the Cad Orange Hue and the Windsor Orange. We could do those two. So, Windsor Orange. And cat orange shoe. Yeah, they're not really the same color. I actually like the Masters one a little bit better. But there you go. Actually, cat orange shoe, that's PY154 and PO73, and it's PO62 in Windsor Newton, so they're not even the same pigments at all. But overall, I think these are wonderful colors. I'll show you that gray mix really quick just in case you're anybody was confused. I was gonna try to keep this under half an hour, but I think we're, I think we're going, <laughs> we're going half an hour. Um, so when you do, um, when you want to make your own gray, it's nice to mix brown and blue. And if you want a textured gray, it's nice to use ultramarine blue. So I'll start off with some ultramarine blue right here. Whoops. Just got some in a neighboring, neighboring uh, well there. Clean that out. And then, well, you can actually add any brown you want to it, um, but I really like that burnt umber here. And you can see how it gets desaturated. It's the orange in the brown that desaturates the blue because they're opposite each other on the color wheel. And so you can make really pretty browns, but you can do that with any opposite colors. You could do red and green, for instance. So if I wanted to take, say, some alizarin crimson, and some Viridian and do the same thing. So what I would do is I would use colors that I've already used. Look at that, it's almost the same gray. But I would use colors that I've already used in a painting and, and choose to make grays from those colors I've already used. Um, even though they look about the same, like that one with the blue and the brown, if when the colors, if the colors settle out, you're going to see little flecks of brown and flecks of blue. Here with the red and the green, if those colors settle out a bit, you're going to see little bits of red and little bits of green. So that's why it's nice to match your colors to the the things you're trying to paint. And you can even do a bright, um, you could do a brighter blue and a brighter orange. So let's do this orange here. And, oh, let's do it. Let's do a phthalo blue. This will probably have a little bit of a greeny undertint to it because of the amount of yellow in the phthalo and the amount of yellow in the orange. Ooh, that's almost like a, like an indigo. Let's get some more orange in there. So, and if it's too green, all you gotta do is add a red to it and that will take out the greeniness. Oh, it's almost like a purpley. That goes kind of like a purpley uh, gray. So it's really fun. Um, if you mix yellow and purple, which are opposite, we get more of a brown. Um, we can try that. M mainly because your yellows tend to have a little bit, a bit of opacity to them. But let's do let's do yellow, and let's do some of that dye. Just a little bit of that dioxazine violet. So you get kind of a brown. But they neutralize each other is what I'm what I'm getting at. So anyway, have fun with your paints. And if you want some paints that are inexpensive that you can practice your mixing on, these might be a good option for you. I would go by the by the tubes rather than buy a set, so you can pick what you want. Again, I'll bring up that I'll bring up my big swatch. It has my my uh, my recommendations on it. This is just recycled palette. I save stuff and just recycle them into palettes, so that's not anything you can buy. It's just um. It came, I think pencils, mechanical pencils from Mr. Penn, a uh, set of mechanical pencils came in there. 
but let's take a look here. These uh, these are the ones I hearted basically because they had stronger, more clear colors. There's only 55 colors in the range, I think, and some of those are metallics. Um, so it's not a super big range, and I think you could probably look and see which ones would suit you best, but definitely go for the stronger colors, I think, and plan on mixing your secondary ones, and I don't think you'll be disappointed with this. Definitely feels like professional paint. Feels like Winsor Newton, quite frankly. Um, all paints have a little bit of a different personality. You're not going to find cadmiums, you're not going to find true cobalts, you're not going to find um, those more expensive pigments in this range. You're going to find that's why they're all priced the same because they're all using less expensive pigments. Doesn't mean that they're lower quality, it just means that they're, you know, different colors cost different amounts depending on how much the factory charges basically for the for the pigment stores or how rare they are. Most pigments are made synthetically nowadays, so it's basically, you know, they just have different prices. So yeah, I like it. I'm I'm impressed with the range, but I would definitely pick and choose because I think if you get a set of 24, you're gonna be disappointed in some of them. Like that white is just meh. If you like to mix pastels, I'm sure it would be useful. But I tend to just water down my paint so I have the the paper shining through. But it's it, it you know what you like. So buy what you like, buy what you're going to use, and I hope this was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy crafting.